What's up, guys? Brandon with Strict Vision Athletics here with the very first uh, edition of, I guess what we could call this is like the client testimonial episode. Yeah, this is the very first time we've done this. Is, is it testimonial or am I about to testify? What's going to happen? Like a, it's probably a testify. <laughs> okay, perfect. I, I want to hear everything that happened. Oh, this will be like <laughs> I, in I history to, forever. I swear <laughs> to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help me God. Is that what you want? <laughs> yeah. Put your left hand God. up. <laughs> that, what, was that your right or your left? It's my left. There's your left. Yeah. yeah. Okay. No, but honestly, Lonnie's been with me for a long time. We've trained together for a little bit of time now. It's been awesome. Uh, I just want to hear, bud, if you would kind of start, you know, where you were when you found me, how you found me, and then just roll from there. Yeah. So, um, wow. Let's talk Grinder, about, talk right? About, talk about being right on the microphone here. No. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah. So, I found I found Brandon in Strict Vision Athletics uh, third week of January this year mm-hmm. after, you know, all of us dealing with, with COVID, lockdown, so on and so forth. Um let me give you a little background on me. So I've been out in Arizona for 26 years now. Um, I'm somebody that's struggled with my weight for my entire life. Um, I've, I've worked out with trainers. I've done to the gym myself. I've done diets, yo-yos, whatever you want to call them, up and down, so on and so forth. Mm-hmm. And my, the role that I have with work is I'm a traveling salesperson, right? So I cover a bunch of states in the West Coast and yada, yada. And, and, and COVID coming and hitting like really put like a major damper onto my my everyday normal life, right? Like we did with everybody. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But after, you know, after what it was about 10 months, you know, I got to the point where it's like, I was so unsatisfied. I was so, I felt broken because I wasn't able to be me face to face with people, so on and so forth. And, uh, and it kind of took a, a pretty big toll on my mentality more than anything else. And also from a physical side of things, right? Like I said, I've been overweight literally my whole life since probably about the age of five or six. Mm-hmm. And, even while being into sports heavily as a child, I was still the larger child, right? But athletic, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. high school, college, and then all the things start to spiral out of control. You know, you get older, things start to slow down, things start to break down. And it came to probably about like November of last year when it was like getting out of bed in the morning and like everything like creaked and cracked and hurt. And I was like, you know what? I need to put an end to this. So I'm searching on Facebook and come across this like looney tune of a of a guy <laughs> <laughs> i mean this this just like this 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 complete looney tune of a character just you know talking about strict measure athletics and yada yada oh, yada, yada, yada blah, blah, blah. hang on one second i'm gonna <laughs> fix the light <laughs> <laughs> and 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 you know talk about hey you know and it's like kind of like a posting of an advertisement if you will for mm-hmm. the neighborhood and so oh that's nice mood lighting i like it uh, why didn't he turn the lights out when he was down there? That was I, well. He is your brother. I, 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 that's a good point. <laughs> and so yeah, it's so much better. Right? It's so much better. better. But um, no, really, what it came down to was I, I stumbled across him on Facebook on on the community Facebook page, and set up a meeting to come and visit. You know, just to see what the gym is like or whatever, so on and so forth. And like I said, I I'd worked out for, with many gyms before. I worked out with many um, trainers before, and nothing ever fit. Mm-hmm. And 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 it's it's weird until you know, but choosing or creating a relationship or a bond, if you will, with a trainer is kind of like re- creating a relationship with a with a therapist, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Mental therapist. Yeah, it's weird, right? So for me, for all the times that I worked out with somebody as a personal trainer, whether it was at you know one of those big monstrosity gyms, and you're paying money for some Yahoo that's maybe got a GED. Uh, that doesn't understand what it is that they're doing to begin with. And you walk out of there feeling completely destroyed uh-huh. and you never want to go back. Right, 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 right. And so we, I ended up coming over and meeting you and you were showing me the gym, whatever. We discussed the program, et cetera, so on and so forth. And I was just like, what? I have nothing to lose. I have mm-hmm. only something to gain, period. Mm-hmm. And I was fortunate enough that the, the company that I work for, being so thankful for that company, uh, we had to go through furlough time last year because of you know economic downturn and the uncertainty, so on and so forth, that they the, the end of last year, they said, hey, you know what? The time that we made you guys take off unpaid furlough, which three weeks for me, mm. we're, gonna pay you, we're gonna pay you for it. Mm. And I'm just like, cha-ching, this is great. Right. Mm. And I'm thinking to myself, what's the best way that I can utilize this money? I could take my wife on vacation, I can do some other stupid thing to the house. Mm. And I'm like, there's no better use of this money than to invest it in myself and Amen. invest it in my health and invest it in my mentality and my physical being. And, mm-hmm. and so, and, and off we went. Right. Mm-hmm. And so 
Yeah, never, I, never spend that money on your wife. I totally get that. Wow, well, I'm, 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 <laughs> <laughs> I'm totally so, kidding. I'm totally kidding. So, so it's been it's been a journey. We started we start you started training me February first because mm-hmm. remember you were like you know you want to start tomorrow and I'm like no let's start February first because I just want to make you know I got a specific start date in my head. And yada, yeah, yada. yep, I remember. And I remember from all the times that I worked out in my life, specifically with the trainer, and even when I was going by myself to the gym, it was after like the first three days you're just like. I don't want to do this anymore. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this this hurts. This sucks. I don't want to do this. Yeah. Yeah. And it was just, I you know, starting to work out with you here, like I felt like immediately, and I know that we've had this conversation, I felt like we we clicked immediately. Yeah. And I oh, felt yeah. that there was, there was, I don't want to say this necessary connection, but it was like a kind of like a bond. like Chemistry. I, I, a chemistry, right? Yeah. Thank you. Like, like all of a sudden, like here I am putting my trust into this guy that I don't even know. Mm. And... And getting over, and let me tell you, the first two weeks, God, were they brutal. Yeah. I mean, they were brutal. And not because, not because you put me through the ringer, but, which you kind of did, right? Uh-huh. Because I was so, so out of shape. I mean, I'm still out of shape, but like, so out of shape. So much, yeah. But just the, I remember the, the yeah. even something like a step up. A step up. The, oh, God. The workouts were the most simplistic that we've ever done, yeah. but they feel like you're being put through the meat grinder. Oh, totally. You're that. Just out totally, of shape. totally. I mean, I'd go home and I would like it. Take me like fifteen minutes just to like get my breath and get myself settled before mm-hmm. I was able to drive away from here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So fast forward, let's say a month, and like we get through the first, you know, the first sessions, you know, program or whatever. Yeah, and I start to get endurance, mm-hmm. and I notice that we're making progress, right? And so I'm like, okay, let's let's continue going, mm-hmm. and month two month three month four month five month six we're on month we're on month nine now. we're on month nine yeah dude. and yeah and so crazily enough so what i can say is like do i notice and feel a difference i mean absolutely mm-hmm. right so i mean I, it's so for a number of things so i know i've jumped all over the place people were just like this guy's out of his freaking mind <laughs> <laughs> no it's so, exactly so like i said so so i've been overweight my entire life i was i was diagnosed type 2 diabetic six years ago mm. and you know with the weight and, and 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 eating programs it's like you're all over the place and before i had met you i was doing a uh doing a, a specific specific diet called octavia okay which is a um what do you call it? It's like a, a soy protein based diet right. where everything's purchased online, yada, yada, yada. I mean, like, I don't want to call it a pyramid scheme, but I mean, it works. Sort of, yeah. It, it, it worked, but the problem was is that I was losing weight, but I wasn't feeling stronger. Right. And for right. me, you know, you can lose weight, but I'd rather lose weight and feel stronger. Yeah, who cares mm-hmm. how the number on that scale, how right. that changes if I don't feel like I'm better and can do more stuff and more I learned, mobile? I learned the coolest thing over the last nine months. Do you uh. know the differences between a pound of fat and a pound of muscle? Size? Exactly. I, and and, and like, like, you, like you think about it, like I was just like, it's so weird. I've only lost like 20 pounds. But I honestly feel like I'm in the best physical shape that I have been strength-wise. Uh. Since I was probably a freshman or junior in high school, that's awesome. That's a great, that's yeah. a great feeling. And it's and 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 the coolest thing is, is getting up in the morning and being able to slingshot out of bed. I have no aches, no pains, no, you know, none of the cramps, none of the creaks Let's and go. cracks anymore. I mean, yeah. like, yeah. And it's funny, like my wife says to me, she goes, "You're you're, you're an animal. You're, a, you're just a beast." And I'm just like, "Yeah, baby." <laughs> <laughs> that's so great to hear, though. Yeah, it's so encouraging. It's been it's it's been life changing, and yeah. and and I've gotten some friends to get off the couch to get into the mood of things, and mm-hmm. uh, you know, I'm not a I'm not a, a blogger, or a TikToker. I, I'm not. I only really got on the Instagram. Just because of, of the what we do, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, so you send me the videos after each workout, mm-hmm. and I throw them up there, and like friends and family, you know, are just like, "Why, why are you posting this?" And I go, "Because it helps me keep myself accountable." Oh yeah. And I go back and I watch these videos, and I watch video. In fact, I watched yesterday a video from like late February. I'm like, "Isn't that sick? How I'm you like, can go back in the history yeah. of all the tagged videos and see something I, from like back in March?" I go, back. and you're like, "Oh yeah. my gosh, it really is real. Yeah. Like that's crazy. The difference between it, then and now. It is." And I go back and I look at it. And I go, "But dear God, I go, how did you let yourself get to be that bad at things?" <laughs> and but like, so fast forward to. to Fast forward to today, to this week. I mean, you know, I'm drinking my BCAA. Uh-huh. It's like for anybody that doesn't do it, they're just like, what the heck is BCAA? And it's like, <laughs> I, you know, I don't know. The guy told me to drink it, you know? 
<laughs> what, 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 what did you tell me to uh, take up? That was actually a question about like supplements that you take and what, what do you usually <laughs> recommend uh, clients? I'm really simplistic when it comes to supplements. I think they're a, a means to an end. They're not a replacement. They're just that. They're supplements. I take amino a- branch chain amino acids, which is what right. BCAAs are, and then uh, uh, I take plant-based protein, and that's it. And the, so the BCAA, <clears throat> excuse me, to my, to my knowledge, and correct me if I'm wrong, mm. it's it's for, for muscle recovery, mm-hmm. right? And that's strictly what it's for. And so the recommendation is one or two drinks a day, right? One or, yeah, one or two scoops, one after a workout, and then one possibly before bed. Right. And so, and I, I only, I drink one of these a day. And I usually, I used to do it where it was only like post-workout. Mm-hmm. And I've started to drink them once per day. And I've noticed that my ability to kind of recoup Mm. After what we go through, because yeah. some of the days I leave here and I'm just like, I'm, I'm, I don't want to say I'm in pain, but I'm, I'm, a little, yeah, I feel a little Fatigued. jacked up, Fatigued. Fatigued. Yeah, yeah. And I wake oh, up yeah. the next morning and I got a, a little pinch in here, but, but it, but it subsides like real, real quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, Getting to what you said earlier, um, it, it's one of the earlier points you made that I loved was the relationship between, you know, a client and a personal trainer, and it is something that a lot of people who aren't either. They don't, they don't either have the experience of hiring a personal trainer or they're a personal trainer that hasn't really done this to the extent mm-hmm. to where they understand this long enough with clients. You do establish a real connection because you're spending so much time together. You right. spend enough time with it. That's why it pays. It's such, a, it's such a benefit to be where we've gotten where we can really select the people we work with mm-hmm. because it's not – it doesn't help anyone and it's not encouraging as a trainer to work with somebody who's – You'd be surprised how many people do this that really they're just doing it so they can, maybe they're doing it because they can drink beer. Maybe they're doing it to stay, whatever it is, they don't enjoy it. They don't like, you want to work with positive people. You want to work with people that want to get the most out of what you're doing because we're we're both working. Sure. I want somebody to push me, Mm -hmm. but I also want to be able to trust that person. And it's, and I was able to determine that after our, really our first session. Mm -hmm. And it's, like you said, it's the relationship building or whatever, but it's, it's also establishing that connection, and so it's it's like, can I trust you? Because really, I'm putting my I'm putting my livelihood in your hands. If you think about it, right? Yeah. If you get hurt, trust, you can't right, go I, on. I, yeah. Sure. So if you remember back to, I think it was one of the first times when we were doing lat pull downs or something, and mm. I had I had gotten out of position and I tweaked just a little bit, I remember. and I had a, I got a kink in my neck, and I'm just, and I've never been to a chiropractor before, and I had to go to the chiropractor like six times, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but it was like. Like your words of encouragement, your you know, you're checking in on me and so on. I mean, these are things that like, you know, the average person, if you go to if you go to see a personal trainer the first time and they just beat the crap out of you to the mm-hmm. point where you don't want to go back the next time, yeah, then then you feel not only do you feel lost, but you also do whatever you can to avoid and stay away. Sure, right. Of course, and so yeah. with with our connection and the way that it started and the way it's progressed and and everything and all the transitions we've gone through. It's been the complete opposite of that, mm-hmm, right? It's been mm-hmm. everything that I expected. It, it, every, it's been everything different than I expected it to be. I always expected it to be the same exact rigmarole that it always has been when I go in and I, I pay a guy money to help me train, to, to push me past where I where I go to, if you will, mm-hmm. right? Um, and then I end up leaving and I'm just like, this guy's. I don't want to go back to this this person. They, yeah. they just, I, I, I feel like crap. Yeah. And it's been the complete opposite. And it's been like, honestly, it's been, don't cry at me. <laughs> this has been literally the greatest nine months of my life outside of outside of my marriage. Maybe if you're watching, I love it. Um, <laughs> That's sorry. awesome, man. Yeah, seriously. It, seriously. It, it's been great. That's I really mean, cool to we, hear. We've done a lot of cool things. And I, have. And, and I there's there's a couple things that I absolutely hate in here. <laughs> Right, yeah, and I'm I know. not. I mean, specifically the <laughs> ice bath, but I mean, I get the benefit of it, right? I just, I, I, I don't like cold. I guess is what yeah, it comes yeah. down to. Oh, ditto. I, I feel that. You won't do it, but yeah. I will tell you. Hey, 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 hey. But I will tell you when I finally got in the the fir- the one. Sorry, the first time and only time that I got in past my ankle, <laughs> and I got to like here, and I stayed in for I don't know a minute and a half, two minutes, and I got out, and you feel it, mm-hmm. but I got to tell you. It works. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But it's just, it's just not for everybody. 
It's oh, it's, it's, it's so mental. It's really hard to stay in there. Like getting in is hard enough and then staying in and like it's being so part. focused on it. Oh, yeah. Eli, I was crying inside. <laughs> I was just like, oh my oh, God, I, why would anybody do this? I thought you were going to say literally crying. That would have made my night if you actually had like tears flowing because I thought I was bad. I, ne- I never cried, but well, okay. mentally and physically. So I think would... about it. So as a diabetic, right, there's things mm-hmm. that diabetes affects and one of them happens to be the nervous system, specifically mm-hmm. on the extent of your limbs. Mm-hmm. So... Poor circulation. Yes, yeah. yeah, so I'm not saying. And look, by the, oh, we can go back into that scenario because that's a pretty cool story there. But I'm not saying that I'm in a progressed state where, you know, that I, that that me going in feels different or feels worse than you going in. Mm-hmm. But I could just tell you, I don't like cold water. Plain and simple. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know right. what I mean. So so while we're on that topic, let's let's talk about it for a second. So yeah, um, yeah, with diabetes, there's a whole bunch of things that, that that come into play. Like we talked about the the the, the nerve scenario, mm-hmm. the vision scenario. I mean, you can the, the list goes on and on and on. Oh yeah. Before we started working out together, before you started training me, mm-hmm. um, I started to notice in my left big toe just a little bit of change in sensitivity, mm-hmm. right? And so I'm just like. Ooh. This is just not good, right? And you hear about these things. And I'm like, all right, I'm going to change my diet. I'm going to do these things. And really mm-hmm. what's changed and worked everything is everything that we do in here. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So <laughs> diabetes is an, it's an incredibly devastating disease, but it's also incredible in that it is reversible through hard work. That's what, yeah. that's what's – because it's so unique in that aspect. There's so few diseases that are that detrimental that fit that description that you can quite literally beat by yourself or it can kill you. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, it, it, look, at, at the end of the day, your health is in your control, period. There mm-hmm. are some things that are outside of your control, mm-hmm. right? Oh, but absolutely. you just have to battle them in different ways. Mm-hmm. Going through this process with you, I think mean, I've seen my numbers. My, I've seen my A1C, which is the, which is the, um, the measurement of sugar in the bloodstream. Yes, yeah. And I've seen my triglycerides and my cholesterol. I mean, it dropped dramatically. I mean, like, when you want to talk about dramatic, talk about, like, you ready for this, people? Triglycerides going from like 1180 down to 305. Mm-hmm. I mean, you, you said in your physical, your doctor is like, hey, man, your, yeah. <laughs> your yeah, cholesterol is do- outstanding. Doctor's like, well, I, yeah, and then the cholesterol, like the cholesterol went from above two at, to like 140. I was 146 mm. uh, awesome. last week. Right. And I mean, I still yeah. got adjustments. Congratulations. Thank that's, you. I appreciate that. Yeah. That's, that's a, all from that's your hard time. work. That's it's, awesome. Yeah. And the A1C, which is the biggest thing that's gauged from a diabetic standpoint, my mm-hmm. A1C went from an 8.2 down to a 6.4. And which is basically borderline diabetic. So, like you yeah. said, the reversal process yeah. is in the mo- is in is in the works, right? Yeah. My blood pressure has gone down. My stress. Okay, I'm gonna let you guys in on a little secret. I know I'm kind of like overtaking this podcast, but you invited me. You invited me. You invited me. So exactly. this, this is all your fault. Yeah. <laughs> so I I had an issue with anxiety for a number of years. It was spurred on from from a multitude of things, right? Obviously, bad health, um, stress level at work. Mm-hmm. Things that I kept internal from from my childhood growing up, you know, having dealing with things that had happened in my past, so on and so forth, that bubbled over and boiled over. Yeah. And I was having a problem with anxiety, and I, you know, the doctor prescribed me um, medication for daily medication and medication if I happened to have a an anxiety attack. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't had an anxiety attack since February. That's awesome. That's and I amazing. used to have them probably once a week. And I attribute them going away specifically to the exertion Mm -hmm. of working out and getting your frustrations out, the frustrations you have in life, the stresses that you have in life, getting them out. In a physical way. In a physical way, right. It allows you to localize and really hone in on emotion. It it provides a physical outlet for emotional pain. Yeah. It does so many other things, physical exercise, but I have found that to be true, that if there is something in your life, something with – anxiety is a big one. And look, I get it. I feel it. We all feel it in different ways. This is therapy in here. This is physical – Therapy and mental therapy. I a buddy of mine. He <laughs> one of my other clients. He's like, dude, you got to rename this urgent care because yeah, pretty much it gets it gets so much of the day just shines when you get this done. Mm-hmm. And 
again, seeing what had what has been accomplished, especially in your case. And I love, love working with people who have a road ahead of them. Mm-hmm. Someone who sees, you know, the inadequacies of their current situation and wants to change and makes that huge, you know, 20, 30, 40% change in their life's health. Mm-hmm. Working with a high level athlete is rewarding in its own sense, but you're talking about a change of maybe one to 2%. Mm-hmm. Someone who's already up there, but seeing somebody like yourself who has, look at those numbers, listen to this, listen to this testimony, listen to how this guy's life has entirely changed. Totally. That is for me, the single most rewarding thing about doing all of this. Perfect. I'll take a discount if you want to throw it my way. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's been honestly though seeing that you because it's so it's so hard to see it sometimes in yourself when you're because you look in the mirror at you all the time, but seeing over the course of nine months what has happened to your life, and and also just it's again. I don't want to cry, but it's it's so heartwarming to see that it all really does work. Talking about looking in the mirror, so something I would never do before, I find myself looking in the mirror now and, and cool. looking at my arms and looking at my legs and looking at like what's happening to my core and everything. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like – I'm just like – <laughs> Hell yeah! <laughs> this is, this, why did you wait so long? You know, I mean, it's mm-hmm. it, it's been great. And, and like you know, a lot of things have kind of working out has done a lot for my health from like how the doctors kind of like look at things and so yeah, forth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's done a whole lot more. I mean, I talked about the mentality, you know, and, and, and the stressors and everything. But I find yeah. myself. I mean, if you look at my, you know, I'm I'm an avid golfer. Right? Yeah, and I know you mm-hmm. guys are also. I'm an avid yeah. golfer and. You know, in the beginning, my God, working out destroyed my golf game. I mean, I I couldn't hit the ball straight anymore. I was going right. I was going left. I couldn't putt. I mean, it was just, it was a disaster. And I was, you know, generally running anywhere between a 79 and an 85 on, you know, on the course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it got to the point where, like, I'm in, like, high 90s. And I'm just like, and at that point, I'm just like, it is like February, March. I'm like, I can't swim the ball. I just just sit there and drink and just drive, you know, ride the car. (laughs) And and finally, like it, it got to the point where we had gotten through a couple. We had gotten through enough sessions that, and I had I had played enough that I kind of got my swing back. And mm-hmm. I noticed that everything had changed in my golf game. Mm. Like the club selection had to change, right? I mean, besides the driver off off the tee box or whatever, and right. the putter on the green, everything had to change, right? So no longer is the seven iron the hundred and fifty yard club. That's the nine iron now. And I'm it's just good. Like, yeah, everything's going further, further, right? And my friends yeah. are just like. Dear God, what is, what are you doing? And I'm just like I, I don't he's, know. He's got me doing this crazy, I, yeah, core work every what? single freaking time I go in there. You, you want to hear a funny story? Mm-hmm. So, so the craziest thing is, do you know what one of my favorite things? And if you do this to me, this would be <laughs> so unhappy. One of my favorite exercises is Russian twists. Oh yeah, that's your favorite. It's one of my favorites. It's I didn't say it was my favorite. It's one of my favorites because of that motion, like golf. Yeah, why? Golf. Okay, yeah. yeah. It's just it's it's crazy yeah. awkward like mm-hmm. that. You know? Transverse plane. Remember the one we did? I think it was a couple of months ago where I had you sit with that stick and I pulled the band and moved it. If different... we were not online right now, I'd, I'd give you, I'd give you the international <laughs> sign for hello. <laughs> that yeah, was the I time. do. But that kind of stuff is, and when you when you told me because you told me early on, like I remember when you expressed to me, like, hey, we're like I'm a golfer. Something's happening to my game, and I'm, I'm like, oh, okay. And you may not know that I hear this, but I, every time you tell me these kinds of things in my head, I'm like, okay, well, let me think about the next time I write. Let me think about the next macro cycle. How am I going to change this? You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to, you know what? We're going to do a lot more body weight, freestanding, transverse motion playing. We're going to do a lot of rotational stuff. Uh-huh. See, if he wants to get better at golf and somehow he feels a little bit stiff, maybe we add the, the I added the mobility stick into the into the warm up. I remember because you said like, yeah, just a little stiff type thing, and. It, it's stuff like that that as a professional you always want to be you always want to be listening even when it's not like okay I'm vi- like I'm venting to you about something that's going on if it's just talking right. always listening always kind of absorbing that be like okay all right he doesn't really like doing it this way or he's you know this is this is an inadequacy like when he does this I can see that this is not where it needs to be mm-hmm. I'm going to harp on that next next month even right. more and that's that's been the ebb and flow and and it's it's just been so 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 cool to see you go from not being able to do the body weight walking lunge 
Remember that? Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. And yeah. now we're doing like strongman carries and stuff outside and, and just, it's everything. <laughs> it, and it, you mentioned something it's also. Like, push, push that sled. Push that sled. Oh, dude, the sled. I hate this sled. This, sled. this is just great. This That's right. We introduced the sled for the first time. Like this last one. We're like, this thing's been here the whole time. This thing sucks. But um, uh, uh, you mentioned, you know, one thing that I, I, we try to make a big, big point of. It's why I, part of why I buy just so much it, being able to keep it fun and interesting. Yeah. That's half the battle with working out. We, we talked about this this past week when I was in here. It was on Thursday when uh-huh. we were in here and doing, doing arms and chest and everything. And, and I'm just like, you know, I'm just amazed. Like, you've got, you've got all this stuff in here. First of all, you've got a lot of stuff in here. Yeah. Yeah. You've got all this stuff in here. And I, feel, I know we've touched every single device in this room. Yeah. I don't know if we necessarily touched after, every attachment. After nine months... I don't know you've if you touched want, most we of it. We haven't touched every attachment, but we've touched every piece of equipment in here, and we've used it in multiple ways. And it's funny. I was – some of my friends that – and people that oh, all of a sudden I've got followers, right? Like, who the hell's <laughs> following? I mean, these, people, yeah, these people are coming out of the woodwork, and they're just like, I'm following you. And I'm just like, oh, I don't know who you are, but hey, good to see you, right? So, <laughs> yeah. But it's just like – and some of the comments have been, you know, it's really cool to see that you work out with this trainer and he, he's using all the things inside of his inside mm. of his portfolio. Yeah. And he is, yeah. right? And it's and it's cool. I mean, this this last program that we had, which, you know, which we got you know, it was it was a lot of fun, right? Especially when it was when it was arms and everything day. Um, was the the one and a quarter reps. Yeah. God, with I the bench press, yeah. Hate those. Yeah, oh, I hate yeah. those. I'd rather you give me more weight than it, do a one and a quarter. Oh yeah, that's a big. I think. I think when you mentioned that to me while doing it, you're like, "This is just. This is terrible. It's also <laughs> ruining my expectations because yeah. I can't do what I used to do on bench press now that I have this quarter rep." That's a simple. I'm so glad you brought that up. That's a simple way that, as a trainer, you can improve. You know, make it worse and then improve the lift by just increasing something like tempo or just adding, you know, more time under tension, more like a little quarter up. You don't have to make it heavier. Oh God! And that's a- <laughs> oh God! And I'm just like, yeah, I got these, no problem. I'm just like, fine, I gotta take these. <laughs> it's, it's so. I mean, it's it's amazing how much you know. Just just the little little things that you change and tweak on a on a week to week basis mm-hmm. make all the difference. Yeah. And it, and it it keeps it from being stagnant. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it keeps it for a fat guy's perspective. It keeps it flavorful, <laughs> <laughs> delicious. You know. <laughs> yeah. It's after nine months. Would you say that you've gotten a good? Obviously, an amazing experience, transformation, but like the, an understanding of how strength training works and how, you know, after four weeks, I go to a new movement set. It's the same muscle groups. I do a different, you know, yeah. if I hit, if I did an upper body day and I did like a, a heavy incline emphasis, well, okay, well, the next month we're going to shift that over and we're going to do decline or we're going to do something different, something more supportive like dumbbell work. Right. Just changing and always keeping it interesting. That's half the problem with uh, people going to the gym on their own and stuff is they run out of ideas and it's not their fault. I'm so <laughs> glad you brought that up. This is a great segue to where I wanted to go next. Yeah. So, I mean, as, as we've talked before. I, I also belong to local gym. So the days that I'm not in here with you, yeah. I do the things like for cardio because this is, and I learned this not too long ago. I feel really good about this. This is anaerobic. There you go. And at the gym, it's aerobic. <laughs> uh-huh. right? So, but I notice I go in and I use a stationary bike there and I'm, you know, jamming out on my AirPods and I'm watching the TV or whatever. And I look around and I start visu- I start visually looking at people. And plus, I like the people watch. But anyways. Oh, yeah. It's the best. It really is the best. And the gym's not a bad place to do it. No. Um, but watching people in their own element or what they believe or perceive to be their own element and working out how they think it's supposed to happen. I learned so mm-hmm. much in here from just proper reps. Mm-hmm. And what I mean by that is watching somebody on a machine pull down as fast as possible, go up as fast as possible. And I'm just like, how does that possibly benefit you? The only thing it could possibly be doing is hurting you, hurting your ligaments, hurting your joints, etc. We're talking about anxiety. I can't even, I, I can't. Right. I can't go to gyms. I can't watch people work so out. It's one tough of, for Yeah, me. so like one of the things that I really, con- you helped me concentrate on this on a daily, daily basis when I'm in here. And, and it's taught me so much is that it's not always the, the inward, it's more so the outward. It's the restriction. Mm-hmm. Concentric and the eccentric, yes. Yeah, right. Yep. Thanks. I mean, I, I, <laughs> <laughs> just, just throw them under the bus. Yeah, that's well, I, I, no, but 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 just understanding, and, and it's 
it's a real shame because it really is the basic ABCs of how strength training is. So much of it is being learned, but so much of it is foundational that's dated back to the 70s and the 80s, back when like, you know, Arnold and those guys are doing it and stuff. Proper technique and tempo is a big, big part of how yeah. this is supposed to be done. And it's just not really all that. We, we, we work out with people all the time. We, 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 anytime, anybody who comes in here, if we have someone come in for a content day or something like that, if somebody comes in here, I, I'm always watching. And it's, it's very, it's very, uh, it's difficult for me to work out with people who have not either trained with me mm -hmm. or, I've personally worked with as clients because then I'm in this place where it's like, okay, I'm watching you do this. I really want to help you because I know you can hurt yourself doing this, but do you want me to do that? It, 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 it's, it's again, it's why for me, public gyms, that kind of space, it's, it's tough for me to go and really get but, a good workout there. Cause I'm but so, there, so distracted. There is very fun to go in and just do your aerobic part and just watch things. Oh, just, watch it, people. It, just watch me. It's like going to the airport, but better. Oh yeah. You, you know, get to see, yeah. I love it. I love the airport. <laughs> So it's, you know, one of the things that we didn't we didn't necessarily touch on. I mean, you did with the with the sticks or whatever, but yeah, I never realized how much before my life before we started before I started training with you how mm -hmm. how vital stretching is on a daily basis. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. like oh, it's just yeah. it's amazing. Like you, you know, like I would hear about like you know like like you know my wife and her friends and some of them talking about like them doing yoga and mm -hmm. doing the Pilates, and I'm just like, oh, this is a bunch of garbage. No, it is not a no. bunch of garbage. No, <laughs> it's no, so hard. It's so hard. And 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 oh, yeah. my wife, <laughs> she'll kill me if I say this, but I'm going to say it anyways. So my <laughs> wife has got a bad case of scoliosis, uh -huh. and so she has difficulty from you know from from body posture. So yeah, on yeah, so yeah, the spinal alignment. And so every morning, and she is my wife's. My wife's a nurse. You know. She's a saint, right? Mm -hmm. So, and and she she's in a car for a good portion of the day. She's very you know sedentary, so she doesn't get a chance to move around until she's out of the car and dealing with right. her her patients and so on and so forth. And so, after I started really learning the mechanics of of the proper stretching techniques, mm -hmm. if you will, in here, yeah, and we started doing it on a daily basis at home. I mean, it's made a tremendous impact on my life, on her life, good, my ability to be more flexible at what I'm doing, and it really helps with. Not hurting yourself as easily oh, with yeah. just with walking. I mean, that's oh, yeah. the craziest thing. I used to walk like, ow, ow. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't, I don't, yeah. I mean, I mean, I still bang into things, but I think that's because my eyesight's starting to get a little bit blurry at forty three years old. <laughs> oh, it, my, my, mine got so bad at like sixteen. I have like really strong has, contacts. Yeah, I have the worst eyes. eyes. <laughs> It's got a rough genetic. So if, yes. without contacts, you were in Coke bottle glasses. Is that what it's like? Oh, you used to. yeah. I mean, I I, I had the big as big glasses. As those <laughs> yeah. All of a sudden, why did I just think about Donnie in um, Wolf of Wall Street? Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. The, big, the big waspy glasses. That's it. <laughs> wow, a that new was... issue day. <laughs> a new issue. A new issue day. I love Donnie. Such That's, a great movie. No, a hundred percent though. Flexibility. Having. I, I'm fortunate in that I actually was as a kid they got me in gymnastics when I was like six so I had I they made us I could do this the splits all three ways when I you know up until really high school when I stopped doing it that for me I think is the single biggest reason why my life choice and my career has been my workouts have just been consistent because I've always stayed consistently maybe even just a little bit above average flexible I've always been that way just because of what I did and I have always made a point to carry that into my training programs to make sure that people understand that. I would say it's probably a one for one, the amount of time you need to spend for recovery and training. Figure if you spend, you know, 45 minutes per day doing, you know, workouts, you need to do something for 45, whether that's eating or stretching or, you know, all that, that's not even counting sleeping. Like you need to make sure that your recovery is balancing the training you're doing. And stretching a huge part of that. And yoga, like you said, that's, that's no joke. That's I, no joke. No, not yeah. at all. I, and I think it even goes back to, I mean, I've been working out with you for years now. And it, like every workout. How long has it been consistently? Because you were in college. You weren't here. I mean, yes, we trained when you were here. but it, During the summers, I was really consistent. But I mean, I've been back since 2020, um, since like February or March. Right. March. It, yeah. So March of 2020 since till now. I've, yeah. I've been 
pretty consistent. But the the warm up in the beginning, like what you said, like you feel a lot better when you do that stretch, especially when you get on that bike. As much as I hate that bike, mm-hmm. especially if you're doing like a 10, 20 finisher. 10, 10, 10, 20. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that's the worst. <laughs> but did you believe the, I asked for that last week? Go ahead. I'm sorry. You no, did. that that's. <laughs> yeah, he's like, can we do the bike? I'm like, Kudos yeah, we can do the bike. Let's do the bike right now. <laughs> no, but I. I never I, say no to the bike. Yeah. I think you doing that bike specifically, I think it literally like, because I sit behind a desk most of the mm-hmm. day behind my computer and when I'm actually getting my whole body moving even if I'm only doing um, a chest workout or a leg, like something specific but getting your whole body in motion mm-hmm. ready to do the workout and then stretching I feel like it, it's kind of a uh, euphoria is that the right word mm-hmm. Euf- yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah euphoric it's euphoric. yeah, it's yeah. Euphoric. Mm-hmm. And, and it genuinely makes me feel like alive again and like actually active even if it was three minutes on that yeah. warming up like, yeah it's insane yeah it it, it so. totally is and it, it, i find it like it kind of it, it gets the blood flowing is really mm-hmm. what it is and you're on the clock as soon as you start your warm-up that's something that people don't it's it's a very strange perception of training and people think okay if i'm not actually underneath the squat bar if i'm not actually lifting my workout hasn't started no your workout has started when mm-hmm. you start your warm-up that's part of it you got to warm up you do your set and then when you do like a little cool down at the end that's all part of the equation and again i it's just a mistake. It's just a mistake, a flawed training system, somebody who doesn't take that. And I, you know, for years, especially when you're younger, you didn't really warm up. I mean, not really. I mean, you stretch. You for, I, mean, I, remember being stretch. On the, I remember being, you know, playing hockey or on, on the soccer field and, you know, you're doing, mm-hmm. you're going through your warm ups and your stretches or whatever. But it was different, right? I mean, right. you're talking as a child or as a, as a kid. I mean, you rebound quicker. Yeah. You know, so, and you don't, mm-hmm. you're a little more limber back in the day, you know? So it was like, <laughs> yeah. now, like I said, I mean, you know, things creak and crack and, and squeak, and it's just oh, like, oh, and you just don't I mean, want yeah, it hurt. I, I, it's just not. Like, so we, we've been using, we've been using the sticks lately, right? Mm-hmm. And one of the things that. What, I, like a month? Maybe a month? Yeah. Yeah. One of the things I don't like about the stick mm-hmm. is that we don't do the full bend over. Because I love to feel the pop of my back. From the, bottom uh, for the to forward top. fold, yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, it's like that. That's like ice cream. Like that's just delicious. Yeah. Right. And I just, it just for some reason, just like so we hit it once. I just don't think we hit it three times like we did on the time on the on the yeah. circuit before. Which uh, we'll add it again. We'll do it twice. Yeah. Why not? It's another <laughs> four seconds. But I can think of. But it's yeah. yeah. I mean, I can think of. There's been so many things in here that like you know you, when you think of being somebody that that isn't a day to day workout person and coming into a gym mm-hmm. and, and working with a trainer and. You know, you, you get in the mindset, or I had the mindset of, okay, well, we're gonna do, we're gonna do, you know, bench press, and I'm gonna do curls, and I'm gonna do this, and I'm gonna do that. And there's been so many other things that we've gone into that have blown my mind, like Bulgarian squits, split squats. If I never hear that term again, I'm happy. <laughs> oh, same. Right? They are it's the ridiculous. worst. Ridiculous. We just did. You're about to do this shit. <laughs> we just did a. It was a it was a triple drop set on the Bulgarians. So you start at if it's like if it's if it's kilograms, you like twenty kilograms. You go you stay on the same leg. So you go eight 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 all drop set all synchronized in a row. So you go left leg twenty for eight, left leg ten for eight, left leg six for eight, and then you go to right twenty eight on the right. Tw- uh, 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 t- you get what I'm saying. Twenty ten five. You do a, a, a triple drop drop set on each leg in a row without stopping. You're not. You do that whole thing. That takes th- three, maybe three and a half minutes to do that. It's a long for ser- one set. For one yeah. set, and then a minute rest. I-, I played pickleball the next day. I I didn't walk <laughs> right for. I'm not kidding. Probably a week and a half. The first time I we skipped. did that, the same thing. Me too. I was I, like, oh my god. I skipped the, the. You know how you're supposed to do it like week to week. I yeah. skipped the second week because I literally was like, I haven't recovered. Like right. I, I don't know what you want from me. Don't tell me I'm doing it again for four sets now. That's not happening. Like, <laughs> and, and he's like, oh yeah, you're doing it this way. Yeah, probably not. But <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, yeah, but no, those are tough. And just finding different pieces of specialty equipment that can allow you to do an already established movement in just a slightly different way. Oh yeah. That's why I love the technology. I'm a total nerd for equipment. I know that comes as a surprise. It's just, I love learning about the newest, weirdest thing that somebody out there, and because there's so many great in, you know, engineers that are working on this stuff and they've got different ways of training and it allows somebody like me to use that. So as a trainer, what would you say is your absolute favorite piece of equipment inside this room? I answer when people ask me that question, I say the kettlebells. 
just because I painted them. They're a collector's item now. They're rare. I got them way early on. I got those are probably one of my first pieces of equipment in here. Right. <sighs> my favorite new one though. I think those dumbbells behind <laughs> you. I think the dumbbells <laughs> behind you, man. Those so, are I, sexy. So as far so okay, so as far as specific exercise, like I can think of like if we went back over the last nine months, mm. I could probably pick out a specific exercise from each program, each one month program mm. that stands out for a reason. Good or bad, right? Sure. And 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 I would say nine out of ten of them are good. Mm-hmm. One would probably be like, God, I hope I never do that again. You're right. <laughs> right? <laughs> and, and like, I mean, so like it was like the Russian twist or one thing. Uh-huh. Um, Bulgarian split squats or another. Bulgar- yeah, so there, there you go. There's, about that, to, there's yeah. that one. You're about to meet the squat max MD that so, I got outside. <laughs> <laughs> that thing is going to be your new nemesis. I promise you. But you've had me on, I don't I don't know what you call that thing there. The T-bar row? The yeah, T-bar row. We uh, have yeah. Roman chair combination the, ro- machine. The Roman chair. The Roman chair. The Roman chair. Right? And like doing it on the side. <laughs> right, the Roman chairs on the side with the fifteen pounds against the chest, uh-huh. right, or putting it behind the head and then doing the fold over, the mm-hmm. back extension, flexion extension. And yeah. I'm just like, I go, good God! First off, why would anybody want to do this? <laughs> and then I'm just like, wow, I feel like I'm really this is working. Yeah, like this is pretty oh, cool, especially that. For core, if I really could only have one piece of equipment for core for the rest of my life, it probably would be a Roman that, chair. That works. And so one of the other cool ones we did was you had leg me raises. hanging. Yeah, the leg, leg raises. The, the yeah. hangers. And I the straps. loved them. Yeah. Those, those are great. so much fun. Yeah. You know? And I'm just like, wow, can my, can I, can my arms hold my fat self up on this thing? <laughs> right? And so and so I get there, and I'm just like, and I'm just like oh, I got to hold them. Like, no, now you got to pull your knees up. I'm like, I got to do what? I got to do What? <laughs> And I, yeah. I loved it. Like when you're like, yeah, we're doing that, and we roll into this, and it's like I just got excited about being able to dangle for for a few minutes. Mm-hmm. And that's and that's another thing I want to comment on is uh, that I've enjoyed so much about our time is you've never once like shied away from anything I've ever proposed that you do. It's never once have you have has it ever been like, hey man, here's what we're gonna do next, and you're like, nah, I don't want to do. Well, that. It, it comes it's, it comes back to one of the first comments that I made when we first started talking about this. It's like it, it's trust, mm-hmm. and I and we and. You know, it, trust takes time, but yeah. but we established that we established that probably within the first three weeks, like mm-hmm. a tremendous amount of trust. Like I, so I started off I was like, oh, I'm going to give him some trust, and you know, after the first two weeks, like all right, I kind of trust this guy. But like after we got through like literally the third and fourth week, the full first the month full program, first month, yeah, I was like, you know what, I can trust this guy. I know that he's got my best interest at heart, and I know that he is only looking out for me like he's not going to put me in a bad position a bad situation and i've spoken up a couple of times where we've gotten to the bar it's like brand i can't do anymore mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know and that's also that's one of the other key things that many people don't realize especially those of us fat bodies that are getting off the couch and getting you know trying to get our lives together is sure knowing when right that you have a limit yeah right reach your limit don't overexert it mm-hmm, mm-hmm. right get to your limit and and every time you go back in take a couple steps forward yeah right same thing to trainers. Yeah. Understanding that not no. everybody needs – you cannot operate at a 10 all the time with mm-hmm. everyone in any given situation. Right. No. You have to understand that everybody is working at a different level of fitness. Everybody's got a different path they have to go on. And, yeah. and while everybody who comes here may start at a quote-unquote starting line, that starting line is different. And I think over time I've developed a very almost chameleon-like ability to – you mirror the client that I'm with and understand, okay, this is, you know, if I get some crazy, you know, high level NFL guy, I like, yeah, I'll I'll yell at you. Why not? Mm -hmm. If I'm working with a, you know, mom from down the street who's you know 59 years old she's this or that she's got all these injuries i'm like i can't yell at her no right, way right. you've got to be able to convey the information from a knowledgeable standpoint you've got to be able to encourage you've got to be able to push but you got to also be able to listen and that's the last thing i think a lot of trainers miss they they, they don't uh realize that this is not you cannot just be you know the drill sergeant from Full Metal Jacket. You right. got to be able to. Right, it's not one size fits all, mm-hmm. and I think that's I think that's the key message there, mm. is that a program for somebody like me is not a program that's some for somebody like him. It's not a program for somebody that's like you. Yeah, it's got to be tailored around that person, and and the the purpose of the trainer is to make sure. And correct me if I'm wrong, because mm-hmm. this is your profession. But the the way that I see it as a client is the the purpose of the trainer is to help me push myself further than I would 
push myself alone, mm -hmm. doing it in the proper manner, but also knowing what I should be doing and how I should be doing it. Absolutely. Right? I mean, because you couldn't say it better myself. Oh, oh. Yeah. Yeah. It's All right, we're done. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Perfectly said, <laughs> perfectly spoken, and it and it's. I'll see you tomorrow. From there, yeah. <laughs> from 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 there, it's it's. I'd take it a, a step further and just you know having a plan for the client before they even realize what that plan is. Right. That's that's another thing is I I try to be as open as I can with the communication. It's a big reason why we do all of our programming through our mobile app, and that you get it on your phone and it's with you and you can look at it, you can analyze it all you want. Why not? Go for it. That's something that even when I was training with the NFL, they didn't do that. We didn't give the guys, okay, here's your program. Here's the mobile app. You're probably not going to look at it, but if you want to, there it is. I wanted to make sure I, I saw that as a big, big setback in that industry. And it's something that a lot of trainers, they, I understand why they, hoard, they try to hoard something mm -hmm. because if you think about it, if I'm a guy at a normal gym and you pay me to train you and for a program and I give you the program. And I show you how to do it. Well, okay. At this point, you're pretty much just paying for motivation and that's it. Mm -hmm. And that was a big, I, I never wanted to operate in that way. I wanted to give everything right away. I wanted to give as much as I could, but understanding as a trainer to my earlier point that every single person that comes to you in that first month, I'm already programming. I'm creating the plan before you know that it's happening. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at this like, okay, this individual has, you know, he's got a bad knee. He can't do these body weight rotational squats. He cannot hold a isometric hold for even three seconds. Okay, well, there's, there's no way. I, I can put him on the squat max MD next month. There's no way he's going to get underneath the tsunami barbell. No, he's, we've got to do, do more of this stuff. We've got to go at a pace that's four, maybe not a pace that's eight. And I, having the ability to do that with each individual new client is why I think our corner of the market is existing and it's popular. Right. Do you hear that? Yeah. The hum? Is that the... I, I do now. <laughs> I, I, I wasn't... I was listening to what you were saying. Oh, you know what it is? It's that stupid thing that I left on the wall. The air... Ugh. Well, while he's doing that, I have a question for you because you asked him what, uh, as a trainer, what his favorite piece of equipment, what is your favorite piece of equipment in here as a, as a client? Oh, that's a good question. I'm glad that you asked me that question. <laughs> no, I really am. Yeah, I'm he was glad. being rude by so, not asking. No, him. well, it's okay. He got all inside his head. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> so I would say it's a multitude of things in here. Um, the, I mean, it's how, how do you? I mean, we do so many different things with with so many different stations, right? right? So it's like how how do you specifically say it? the leg press? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like a lot. Uh huh. I hated the. Um, the treadmill in the beginning, but I uh -huh. learned to love the treadmill later on, right? Um, I, obviously, you could tell running I don't circuits. like to run. It's, yeah, yeah running you can tell I don't. Are terrible. They're terrible, but it's amazing that when you're not running against a machine mm -hmm. and you are the machine, right? Such a such a different experience, yeah. and mm -hmm. specifically that machine because Assault Fitness has done an amazing job with that thing of giving it that. It's almost got a spring to it where you don't you're not running on ground. It's not right. like you're running on the concrete and you're feeling like oh afterwards my knees just gonna kill me. Oh totally. You can haul ass on that thing and you I, I'll feel fine. I'll, I'll run on that thing no problem. The uh, probably the one of the most challenging but yet satisfying routines or or specific things that we've done inside here. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. I don't know what the terminology was, but when we had you got me set up on on the the cable machine. Yeah, there you go. Okay, <laughs> you like that? Yeah, there you go. Yeah. The cable machine, and I'm doing the flies. Yeah, reverse flies and the twists. Yeah, and coming back and with coming the track through. handles. Yeah, and yeah. Like, and I was talking to a friend of mine, and he was just like, he goes, "What's what's that all about? Why would you why would you do that?" And I was just like. I go, look, I don't want my shoulders to be swole, right? I mean, it's swole is a goal, but yeah. I don't want my shoulders to be swole. I go, but I got to tell you, I mean, like, it's impressive to feel, like, what that movement does. Mm -hmm. you know? Oh, yeah. And it hurts. Oh, yeah. But it is so rewarding. Oh, yeah. So that's one of my favorite. That's one of what was one of my favorite things in here. And we, to answer that question, why why do you do that? It's it, As you, if you were to take just a standard 
reverse fly versus that. Standard reverse fly comes back. There's a little breath pause. Then you come back down slowly. Right. But if you take the track handle and you come back to the top and then you take a rotation down and then and then a rotation up and then come, come back, back. Uh -huh. okay, that's another two, maybe two and a half seconds that you're <laughs> yeah. back there at the top. Again, that's an increase of a time under tension. And it's just a really good – it's really good to just go through, you know, pronate, supinate and just really work that it, part of the shoulder. Yeah. It, it was great. You mentioned the tsunami bar before. Yeah. The tsunami bar is a lot of fun. Tsunami bar. You know, tsunami, yeah, tsunami with, with bouncing around, right? With uh, just like this guy, he's gonna do what? He's putting plates on rubber bands. Is that <laughs> really what's happening yeah. here? Like, okay, I'll trust him. You know, and like that was really cool because that I noticed did so many things. It was definitely a great leg workout, but mm -hmm. more, so, it was so core, it was oh, unreal. Yeah. Very athletic. It was so core, it was unreal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. I just mean, to stand there, just yeah, to, just moving. Yeah. It was great. Just moving. Another one that, w that we haven't done yet with that is um, uh, doing a like a yoke carry with it. Like if I a yoke carry is typically where there's a it's a machine. It's it, it's a bar and then it's it anchors at the ground and it's got weights and you'll see the big strong when they lift it up on their back and they just walk in a straight line. But doing that with the bands and with that as it's moving and as you just walk. I just said you walk, not even squat. Just like rock with it. It's very challenging on your that core just awesome. to stay upright. Yeah, it's a great exercise. There's so many. There's so much. There's more than you could ever talk about in an hour. In an hour. Yeah. And, and it's, it's fun to see that with the right direction and the right programming that all this stuff does do what it's supposed to. And mm -hmm. that's why this is, again, I just, it's the most, to my earlier point, it's the most rewarding part of this job that I have found is seeing that, you know, I can bring people up to where they want to be or get them on the path to get to where they want to be right. using the, the, the cool toys that I've either been sent or that look, I've, I've never I've never looked forward to working out. I, look, I get up in the morning and I look forward to working out. I mean, whoever, I never yeah. thought that those words would ever come out of my mouth. <laughs> I look forward to, like, it's Thursday, I'm going to see Brandon on Thursday. It's Monday, yeah. I'm going to see Brandon on Monday. It's Tuesday, Heck I'm with yeah. Brandon on Tuesday. It's like, I get, I get, I get, Pumped. Like, I almost want to just jump out of my seat here, but I know I'll probably fall over as uncoordinated <laughs> as I am. But it's like, I just, you know, you just, I just, I get excited about it now. And I was never excited about it as a younger adult. I yeah. was as a kid because you just, you know, you get that adrenaline rush and, you know, the. Just excited. Just excited because, you know, because you get all those terrible things running through your body. But, <laughs> um, I, I, yeah, I mean, I just like, and even the days that we're not here together, mm -hmm. right? Getting up and be like, I'm going to the gym. Yeah, I'm pumped. I'm going to the gym. What are you going to do? I'm going to just get on the bike for 35 minutes. <laughs> Even if it's just that, just get my heart rate up for 35 minutes. Yeah. You know, watch a little TV, listen to a little music, jam out, have my heart rate to between. And that's another thing that we didn't talk about mm -hmm. while we were on there for the last 56 minutes. What's that? So one of the coolest things was, like, I wear that heart monitor. Yeah. Right? Yeah, and like, I've shared you a couple oh, things. Oh, yeah. And, like, so, like, knowing, and I, this is, I had to learn this over the last nine months, but, like, knowing where your heart rate is supposed to be at, like, your max heart rate. Do you know where your max heart rate is supposed to be at? No, I So you not. take 220 and mm. subtract your age, and that should be the maximum heart rate. That you ever hit. That you ever hit. Yeah. So if I'm 23, it should be 197. Correct. Max. Okay. Are you 23? I am. I come old enough to be your dad. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. <laughs> weird thing to say it's on a weird, podcast. It is weird thing to say. <laughs> Come here, Daddy. No. <laughs> that was an even weirder thing to say on a podcast. It really was. No. So, so yeah. So, 220 minus my age, 43. And I'm just like, okay. So, 177. Right. Right. And how many times do we get up to 175? Is routinely right routinely like, i'll point, have to check my message because you yeah, send them to me I and i'll post so them like, like hey so man like, look what he's doing yeah so like so many times that like that my cardiologist who i see because smart men go and see the doctor i'm just going to tell you that now oh, yeah. smart oh. people go and see the doctor on a regular oh, absolutely. basis but even the doctor's like he goes yeah you might want to just dial it back just a little yeah and i was like yeah i i got you but this guy's got me doing like 10-10 and 10-20 on this assault bike. <laughs> I go, do you have any idea what that does to the human body? But anyways, I mean, so like, so yeah, I mean, I mean, really pushing the limits, but not pushing it to the point where it's unhealthy. Right. It's right, right, all right. been healthy. Every single part of it's been healthy. And, and I can't. I can't thank you enough for like oh, for pushing thanks, me man. You're and welcome. getting me to that spot that it's been. And I look forward for the next 
nine months, three years, five years, uh-huh. however much longer you allow me to come in here until they shut us down, you know? Heck yeah. Well, <laughs> and to what you said about how you are able to push yourself, I, I've made this comment, I think, a couple times, I think probably right as you send me your heart rate and we look at it, and I'm like, you have to understand that there is a there's an X factor in training that can't be programmed, it can't be taught, it can't be conveyed through motivation, really anything. And that is a person's ability to achieve intensity. You know, every human being can go through the programs that we've gone through, but not every human being can push themselves to get their heart rate that high, to, 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 to push to the point where they know, okay, well, look, here's where I'm, here's where I'm wanting to stop. I know he's watching me and he may not be yelling at me, but I know he's watching me. I'm a push to this level. And I, you, you know, your training, our dynamic has been so good because you have the real and true X factor motivation to push yourself beyond where you know you want to stop. That is or so, why do I should stop? You mean you're right. You're like, <laughs> the cardiologist is in the room, like ah, you should probably stop. <laughs> it's like when I said to him like two months ago, I'm just like, hey, you only come in for a stress test. He goes, nope, we're good. He goes, I see it on your app. He goes, we're good. You yeah. don't need to, you, you, you're stress testing yourself on a weekly basis. That's it's, it's exactly it, what you're doing. Yeah. That's right. exactly what you're doing when you come in and you do this kind of stuff. You, you're yeah. putting your body through a stress and, test every and the ca- day. And the calories burned? I mean, how many times did I send you a text? I'm like, dude, 570 calories, 630 <laughs> calories. In a 47 minute. Yeah. 690 calories in a 45 minute session workout. And mm-hmm. I'm just like, oh my God. And I'm it just doesn't like, take hours. It does not. It take does hours. not take as much time as it people just, think it does. It, it just takes the right activity mm-hmm. in the right specific increments, yeah. and it's amazing. Yeah. It's amazing what it can do. Oh yeah, and with with somebody who has taken a lot of the legwork out in the programming, in the you know the setup, in the in the design, everything's already ready to go. Right, and and that's why it's. <sighs> It's very hard sometimes when I speak to other trainers about how to kind of replicate or do this when they're working out of LA or Ape Fitness or someplace where it's like, okay, yes, you can, you can try to do this, but, but understand, I mean, I can set up six stations all in a row. No one's ever going to go on my machine, my machine. Nobody's ever going to get in our way. We can literally go bang, 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 bang. We can do the entire thing without stopping, without mm-hmm. any thought of an interruption. Right. And that's just, it's hard to do. That's hard to do if you're not in an, in a private and it's, I just, I'm, I look back, I'm so thankful for my time, you know, with the league, the way I was taught. I never, I've never done a class. I've never taught. Okay. In college, I taught at a senior citizen TRX class, but other than that, never taught a class. It's only ever been, okay, here's your client. Here's your program. Here's your gym. Now go. Mm-hmm. And that's the only way I've ever known how to do this. And this is why, again, I, I, I see a real hole in this industry, especially where we're at geographically. In the East Valley here, I don't, there's not a whole lot of places that even offer this. This is very hard to find. And that's why, I, I, you know, this podcast, the marketing, the social media, all of that stuff is a, of huge importance. Just I would just want to get the word out. I just want people to know that this is even here. And I honestly think the last 18, 19 months that we've dealt with this pandemic, if you will, I mm-hmm. mean, it's forced a lot of people to look internally to themselves because we've had so much time to yeah. think about things. And we've yeah. been able to slow down life just a little bit. And, you know, I'm just I, I'm hoping that people heed the I don't want to say heed the warning, but kind of like look, look to the inside you know, and, and just check yourself on what's what's important, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. working in a fast-paced sales environment, you know, I've always been so focused on my my work, my progression at work, you know, my ability to reach next levels as far as sales and so on and so forth. But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter because you can't take any of that stuff with you. No. Right? All you can do is live in the moment you have now and do what you can to take care of yourself so you can extend that journey. Yeah. You can't level up if you can't freaking right. operate. Right. Yeah, it's, a, it's, it's a big... So I, I, I was, yeah. yeah. So I was going to say, so I think... Amen. Amen. So I, so I think that the pandemic, hopefully, has opened enough people's eyes. And I've noticed it. I've seen more and people the health. that are going... I mean, the, the emphasis is... Oh, it's yeah. It's so sad that that's not being... That's not the mainstream narrative is, hey, everybody check your health. Everybody, what are you doing for your diet? What right. are you doing for your training? Yeah. What, when's the last time anybody talked about that? Uh, that's just I, not. Yeah. And that's just a, a real shame because mm-hmm. this, like you said, this has been a real travesty for so many people's lives. And just a, you know, we, it's our been works wake, have been shot down. A bit of wake up. Call. It's been a wake up call for some. Yeah, but I don't think it's been a wake up call for enough. 
Oh, I don't know. And I know that I have a, mm-hmm. I've got a long journey ahead of me. Mm-hmm. But this journey's never going to end no matter how good of fitness I've been in. That's a it's right? a and perfect way that, to put it too. And, right. And so it's like somebody asked me like, well, "What's your end goal?" I don't have an end goal. No. My end goal is to be healthy. Plain and simple. <laughs> when I die, uh, I guess that would yeah. be the end, but I just, no. just right, I just want to say that I that that while it took me too long to get off the sidelines, if you will. Yeah. Well, it took me too long to get off the sidelines. Because I got really started doing it like when I was in my forties. It's right, like right. I want it to be where like this is where I'm at every single day of my life. That's right. Right where I get up and I'm be just healthy. like until the be day healthy. I die. Right. Exactly. You don't want to be. You, you see. You know. You see so many people that are in their sixties or seventies or eighties, and you see you're just like, man, I get it. Father time is undefeated. It's going to happen to all of us. Yeah. This doesn't have to be Tom Brady. Doesn't. I don't know. I can't yes, stand that one of guy. I know. I know. You, you have a different. What? You can't huh? stand Tom Brady. Oh, I, I'm Tom a Jets Brady. fan, and I and I, I will tell you, as a Jets fan, and yes, it's a laughable matter being a, to actually say <laughs> on live whatever you want to call this that you're an actual fan of the New York Jets. <laughs> but I, you got to give the guy credit. He is the greatest of all time. I mean, he's, and he's done it at a 43, he's, 44. He's, a, he's 44 years old 44 now. Years he old. still continues to do it. I mean, if you look at his numbers this year, mm-hmm. I mean, he's on track to break records for a season, not just for, hey, I've been in the league for 22 years. I've got another. It's just no, it's, it's unbelievable. And yeah, and yeah. so it's, 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 it's being true to yourself, being proactive and, and taking care of your body and – Everybody's journey and path is different, but you just got to make the most of, of what's in front of you and and don't miss time on it. No. Don't miss time on it. Amen. Plain and simple. Amen. Well, bro, thank you so much for coming on. I really Thanks. appreciate no, it. Seriously, I, this it, is amazing. This is awesome. This has been awesome. What do you I, think? This has been a great, oh, amazing this has been episode. One of my favorite ones. One of my favorite ones. Have, me too. Are there two people watching finally? Oh, well, I mean, right now there's actually three. That's but, awesome. But it's, it's, it's varied. <laughs> right. It goes up and down. No. It's, it's funny. that we'll, we'll talk about it after. Guys, thank you so much for watching. This has been awesome. An amazing episode. And, and again, I think this is just the coolest possible way to do client testimonials, to talk about the, the, the journey he's had and just how it's all been. And I, I love this. This has been amazing. Awesome. Guys, Lonnie, thank you so much, man. Thank you. Good Appreciate job, it. Man. Thank you guys so much for tuning into this episode of the podcast. If you guys like our content and you want to see more of it, click the subscribe button down below. Or as always, you can follow us on any of our other social media platforms. Stay fit, you guys. Stay healthy and become the 1%.